I told you already, didn't I, that I love Terence McKenna, who I believe to be one of the most underrated philosophers, orators, thinkers, mischief makers of the last century. In the last video, I gave you a bit of an introduction to him. Link to that video is here. Now, I'm gonna go on about him a little bit more because I love him so much. There's hours of Terence McKenna on YouTube. Look him up and learn about him for yourself. In this video, he's talking about the impact of media. Yet again, with incredible prophetic insight, given he's speaking before the state of immersion that we currently live in. For at least 200, maybe 300 years, Western civilization has been largely shaped by what is called mass media. Mm -hmm. means, first of all, newspapers and then all the electronic mass media. Mm -hmm. The nature of mass media is what's called uh, one-to-many communication, where uh, uh, a letterman or uh, somebody speaks and millions listen and emulate. Mm -hmm. the, the Internet is what's called uh, any-to-any communication. Uh -huh. You and I can have an email exchange, or I can send email to a thousand people, or I can join a chat group of several hundred. And mm -hmm. I think the changes are more profound than we can even imagine because the mass media created two things which we cannot imagine living without, the idea of the public and the idea of the citizen. And these, uh, now we hear a great deal about how society is dissolving into anarchy. What it means is there is no more public consensus. And that is because the post-electronic uh, media personality isn't interested in following fads dictated from above in quite the same way. It's interesting what McKenna is saying is that the idea of the public comes from somewhere. This is so uh, ubiquitous, the idea of the public, that we sort of assume that it's absolute, that it's a truth. Elsewhere on my main channel, when I talk about dark matter and the discovery of dark matter and how it makes us challenge the way we look at reality, or at least acknowledge there are aspects of real reality that are invisible to us, only the consequences of those phenomena are um, identifiable. It, it helps us to understand that we are constantly curating reality as we perceive it and interact with it, that there put simply is not such a thing as objective reality, particularly not through the lens of culture and even something as broadly understood as the public or the citizen is necessarily a construct. I'm interested to see where McKenna is going with this, you know, with his idea that internet offers the opportunity for any to any communication. We've all seen that that's created a few things now with the benefit of hindsight that Terence McKenna didn't have. <laughs> One thing, excuse me, one thing it's created is a lot of polemicism and oppositionism. It has created tribal groups where people can cooperate and corroborate of like, oh, I'm here really into these porcelain figurines. Do you want to collect them together? Do you want to trade them? Or I'm really into going into long walks and canal boat holidays. You know, of course it can be used for loads of things, but I guess the things that we're most aware of with the changes that the on lower line cyber world has brought is polemicism and further power for corporations to corral us into marketable demographics and hit us with bespoke advertising. The fact is, is there was a lot of early excitement about the internet, and I guess that is to some degree what McKenna is pontificating on, that where people thought that, oh, hold on a minute, we're going to organise ourselves differently. We don't really need government. If we can all organise everything electronically, like, all right, we, this is how we'll organise this particular system and, you know, for people with better skills and understanding than me, all kinds of municipal facilities could be organised online. You wouldn't need to centralise all manner of things from the food production to electricity. All of these things could become localised and localisation is another thing you probably know I'm really interested in. Another thing Terence McKenna was well on top of. One of the reasons I like Terence McKenna is when he talks about rational sociological matters, he's coming from a perspective because of his interest in psychedelics of deep mysticism, of a deep understanding of the nature or natures of reality, a kind of shamanic view of the sublime and holy 
interwoven in ordinary life and how the holy or inform the way that we conduct ourselves in ordinary life. When you extract divinity and the sacred from our systems and our means and mechanisms for exchange, what you're left, left with is a kind of brutal materialism. Brutal in the sense that what you're left with is what can be measured and exchanged and bartered. You don't consider the things that all of us individually recognise are the most important things in our life. I mean, gosh, of course I recognise food and shelter are important, but I'm talking about, of course, love and kindness and being able to feel for a moment that you're not alone here and that there are possibilities beyond the inevitable expiration that all of us will experience individually and, you know, of course, for those that we love. The mystical component invites us into territories where the sort of brutal reality of atrophy is bearable. That is not the reason that religion exists, if you ask me, although a lot of atheists would say that's precisely why religion has to be sort of constructed. No, it's an acknowledgement that we only understand a limited portion of the electromagnetic range, and I would say there are parallels in the realms of consciousness to the limitations of the senses. You know, our consciousness is limited. McKenna, because of the sort of sheer bloody amount of drugs he took or plant medicine experiences, shamanic experiences, has had these sort of consistent archetypal encounters with peculiar entities that have explained reality to him or at least given him an empirical experience of reality that is at odds with this blunt material means. His perspective of reality I find deeply, deeply heartening and inspiring. Oh, heterogeneous and complex society that's all niches. There's no public anymore. There's just niches. The Latino niche, the lesbian niche, the this niche, the that niche. Mm -hmm. And there is no cohesion anymore. Well, some people think this is a terrible thing. I happen to think it's a very good thing because I think it makes us much more difficult to coerce and to control. Yes. So the ending of the age of mass media is uh, something that the world corporate state has not really braced itself for because it has so much money invested in these now dinosaur forms of media. I suppose now when you look at the censorship that takes place, the sort of cyber land grab and the way that the internet has been co-opted, dominated and colonized by powerful centralized interests, it makes um, McKenna's optimism uh, you have to view McKenna's optimism from a, a, a different perspective now. You have to recognise oh, that they did learn how to tackle that problem. I still, though, with regard to just this one issue, I am inspired by McKenna's perspective and by the kind of already nostalgic notion that perhaps the internet could become a place for, excuse me, greater autonomy, deeper autonomy, more connection between like-minded people, freedom from the uh, dominance of centralized systems that we seek to assert their will on every space and every aspect of your life. Sorry for the burping. It's this kombucha, kombucha cat. This isn't even an advert. This is just a genuine ringing endorsement of a damn fine drink. It's not an advert. They're not a big company, I don't think. Uh, you know. I'd take the cans if they came. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know. Send me some uh, more clips, actually, in the comments, if you could, of McKenna. Links to them, because I want to talk about, I want to see where him talking about God and religion and his, uh, how his psychedelic experiences corroborate religious and spiritual uh, ideas. Can you send me some of that? Do, do your own research. No, you do the research. If you like it, like it. If you're not subscribed, subscribe already. Could you get subscribed to this and sign up to my mailing list? I'm going to be doing some live shows and I'd love you to come and see them and I'll tell you all about it in my mailing lists. Thanks very much. Peace.